Well, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is uh, El Imabuna. I will be a lecture throughout the, the offering of for this subject. The subject could CTL ELB3. We offer it in English. And for the sake of consistency, well, if you happen to think I know your home language, it's advisable that we stick to English because you're going to get a surprise of your life. I want the discussions to be open and transparent to everyone. As you'll realize, some sessions will be recorded. So a question which you ask might be relevant to other students uh, who might not understand the language you used then. Uh, time will come when we meet face to face, then from the, the corridors, then we will be free to speak in Satsonga, Shibenda, and so forth. Um, without further waste of time, let's go through the content of your subject. Okay, now, what we will be using most is notes that I will deliver as we go along. And those of you who are like textbooks, more information may be found in the seventh edition of Control Systems Engineering by Norman S. Nice. Uh, there is also another book, which I have been looked at it myself in person. I found it in a study guide developed by Prof. Shongwe, a professor who offered the subject before me. So I trust his judgment. It's a book by P. Ellis G. Jonger, D. Pence, Introduction to Control Systems. So, so other supplementary book, which you can consider uh, downloading from online sources. It's Modern Control Systems, 13th edition by Richard C. Dorff. So as explained, most of the content will come from the notes. Uh, well, what is it expected from you as far as this subject is uh, concerned? So these are GA. I think you've come across a lot of this in your career. Uh, for Bakel of Engineering Technology. Uh, you will be assessed on mathematical sciences, where we check, can you use your maths to solve the problems within uh, the syllabus and engineering sciences throughout the syllabus. This we may introduce you to it not necessarily to be assessed, design and uh, synthesis. Uh, when, we look, when looking at mathematical models of system, transfer function, we're gonna do Laplace transforms here. For sure you cover this in maths. So it's no point for you for us to assess you this year and yet it's assessed on your mathematics. Frequency response and stability of systems. Now, how will we calculate your final mark? Right, you're gonna write a number of tests. Uh, let's pick on the basis of uh, continuous assessment. So this was written on the context of examinable, uh, whether where you will be writing an exam. So there won't be any examinations, no examinations. So what it means is each assessment you do is an exam with only one difference. Yeah, you can get 40%. Then you continue with the next assessment. But your final mark, after all, it should give a, a mark above 50%. So that will be your final mark. It must be a mark above 
for you to get a credit for this subject, even though you can fool 40% and allowed to proceed with the next. Some continuous assessment quite often, they will require you to get 50 for each assessment. We don't want to ping pong on these things are difficult, it's online now. Well, we might not, it might take guys longer to get 50% or end up having a lot of drop out. So we consider those factors. Uh, right, but then before that 50% count, if it's your minimum mark, the graduate attributes, the one which were mentioned in the previous slide, engineering, science, and mathematics, you should have demonstrated enough knowledge to that. If you have been dead, then it means your mark will be kept. Uh, to a mark below 50%. So there is no way you're going to pass without having complied with the uh, graduate attribute. Make note of that. So you shouldn't come to me and say, listen, but my mark is 60%. Why did it come out as 39%? That will be because you didn't comply with the graduate attribute. Uh, well, in as for introduction, um, as for the introduction, this is what we're going to look at. Uh, we're going to be looking at the definition of control system. And what are the principles of control system and the components of control system? the examples of control systems. Uh, we won't get to this today, but that is the thing which we'll be reviewing uh, Laplace transform. Now, this as the one the system showed here is a, a, a system. So you look at that, there is a human being involved as part of the system. There is a car and there is a, a parameter, which is the car speed and another parameter, which is a desired speed. So this, the whole activity here is a control system. Now it's a good name here, we're looking at open loop. What is it that it, it means by open loop? What it means is the input has got nothing to do with the, the output. In this case, is the car speed. Now, what, yeah, what is the desired speed? You look at the board on the road, it says 60 kilometers per hour zone. So then if this guy doesn't want to get a fine, you will try to adhere to that speed. So all you have to do is the position of this foot pedal is make sure that it keeps the speed to 60, yeah, right? But then the problem here is what if you both up here, then the speed will be reduced. And without any feedback, that's where the speed reduces. There is nothing we should come back and say, wait a minute, but now you're going up here, the speed has reduced, press further than what you're pressing. So there will be a challenge there. That's the incompleteness uh, completeness of open loop. So there is nothing which uh, the, the, the system take from the output to readjust. So if you go downhill, the, the car will run faster. Then again, same thing, he doesn't rely on the output. So the driver there is just sitting, pressing, thinking, well, the way he pressed is going to be 60. Yes, initially it has been 60, but because of changes or the steepness of the road, then the, the speed might change. Since he's not even checking, uh, relying on the output, he doesn't look at his speedometer, then there will be such kind of fluctuation. 
It's a ridiculous example. Quite often drivers do that, it's an energy move, but we're looking at a scenario where the driver tends to ignore perhaps his truck, the, the changes on speed. Uh, now, this is the realistic example, the closed loop uh, control. Now, again, there's a speed limit, 100 kilometers per hour on the road. And this is the what is desired to do. Sped in, and then you press the foot pedal to align 200. And then the car moves at 100. And this is the, this is the process. This is the process, huh? So the information is processed here, but it is it an individual. And then here we have the, uh, the, the, the what do you call this? Uh, this is the processor, and here we have the, we can call this an amplifier for now. Uh, that's where the gain, okay. So a small adjustment into this will be magnified to, to give a desired output. So that car will produce the speed based on the information supplied by the process which is an information which can tell it to increase or decrease. But now, here, if you look at the output, we've got a sensor right there, which is sensing the speed. Now, when you go up here, now the feedback, it's like comes to the driver and say, wait a minute, but the speed has been reduced. And then when you compare the measured speed and the desired speed now, you look now, say the car has dropped to 90. So what will be the error? This one, it was supposed to be 100 as observed on the road. 100 minus 90, we've got an error of 10. Uh, now this being less and that being high plus. So it's say now, press more to compensate for, for 10. Then the information is processed and then there is more process, uh, pressing. And then as like uh, the, the system responds there on the gain, and then the car speed is increased. So this is more stable. If you go downhill and now the speed will become faster, say it goes to 110, but the speed was supposed to be 100, minus 100 minus 110, and then it's minus 10 then it means reduce, release slightly the accelerometer and then to get the speed to 10 kilometers per hour less. So this will maintain constant speed, irrespective of whether the car is moving up here or down. And that is the duty of a load loop control. Okay, now those are the, the, the components of the control system. We've got a set point, uh, which was your speed, and we've got the control output. Uh, we've got the plan, that's where the technology which I was uh, struggling to get right. And we have the, the controller right there, and we've got the sensor, that in that case it was a speedometer. And now uh, we've got the error signal there, which is generated when you compare the set point with the feedback signal. So the feedback signal, that's what is processed by the sensor, H of S, which detects the speed and then in that, as per previous example. And then when on comparison, the error signal is the one which tells the controller how to react to that, the information now being passed to the plant. 
So they say the plan this might be a, a factory, an industry, it can be a big thing. So that's why they use it, uh, or that's why they call it a plan. Now, here is a, a simple controlled output. If we look at this now, we've got a tank where this transmitter will transmit the, the level information about the tank. So the tank is getting filled up. The level transmitter transmits to the level controller while receiving the information here, yeah, like this tank is getting full. Then the level controller will close the valve to stop any further input of liquid. So there's a level valve which is being controlled by the level control. So there is a form of closed loop. Well, how can you draw, sketch this uh, in, a, in a form of log diagram? Think of it. So perhaps after this uh, lecture, consider re drawing this uh, level control using block diagrams. Uh, well, those block diagrams similar to that. Okay, label it nicely. There's another one you're familiar with this. Each and every house in the toilet, you find this. Uh, now, you flush the toilet, the water level goes down. Then there's a feedback, we say now the tank need water. Then the valve is open. Water comes in, as the water comes in, as it gets full, then there is a feedback and say, don't put more water, it's gonna overflow. And then it shuts down the, the valve. So it's similar to the previous one. I want you to sketch the, this system using blocks and label them nicely. Now, how do we represent a control loop? This is an open loop, obviously. And this is your set point, and you've got your controller, uh, which feed information, U of T with respect to time, to the plant, and then you've got disturbances there, N of T, N for noise, which goes into the plant and then you will put the resultant out. So things doesn't just go smooth. Whether open is open loop or closed loop, you've got uh, noise interruptions. There is another example. Uh, reference signal. And uh, we have got the feedback signal now. This is a closed loop controller. That results from the controlled output being sensed. And then the difference error signal E of T, <coughs> it goes to the controller, which feed information to tell the plant on how to act, to react to that. And then from there, you've got disturbances, N of T for noise, and that results onto the specific output. Yeah, that's it, folks. You know, but I want us to look at uh, some notes there by Prof. Shongwe and see if we can get some, some nice uh, info to, to, for just for cross referencing. Um, well, now. We've got this one now, which needs to be rotated. Rotate clockwise. Okay, now. Then it says chapter one. Now we already gone through the aims, but just for the sake of uh, 
those who might have been grasped it, will, you should be able to define the system and define the term transfer function. So we transfer the input to become a useful uh, output. Uh, we we'll look at the characteristic equations. Uh, we're gonna use other nodes for that. And we must be able to give examples of open loop system. You saw that already and closed loop systems. So you need to give more further examples. Uh, how will you alter an open loop to become closed loop? Now, the whole uh, control system can be simplified. You've got an output response in mind when you fit in a stimulus, but then it come out as other things. That depending on the stability, that will uh, determine as to how close you get to the desired output. And you've got an output response. So, well, right there, we've got a point of comparison from what you get in the output and what you were aiming to be getting, which results onto an error. Uh, now we've got this block. It's interesting now. They say G of D. Uh, that one which we call the plant. Uh, now, it's, the section 1.4 will have a closer loop to uh, open loop and closed loop control. So now in the subsystem, you can have a plant, engineering plant, and the, which is connected together with other things. So it could be a, a beer manufacturing the plant. It can be a food processing plant, any other useful uh, thing, even a car assembling plant, which if it's designed properly, it needs to be modeled. Uh, in, a, in, in, a, in, a, in a proper manner, so that you don't do try and errors, you will be able to isolate faults and be able to uh, do troubleshooting or properly redesign it if there is a need. A system is an arrangement or set of collection of items connected or related in such a manner as to form an entity. Well, your cell phone is an system. It has got speakers, it has got uh, microphones, but all in all is to be used for communication purposes. Uh, now we're looking at open loop systems. Uh, we, one of the components is the controller that drives the process. Yeah, you saw that. And the input is a reference. So you have a, a specific uh, or anticipated output in mind. Like if you go to a washing machine, for instance, you want to wash your clothes, you're going to set the timer. Depending on how the material, the fabric, and the how dirty the, the, the fabric is, you will set the timer based on the, such uh, details. And that is your input and say, now I wanna run this thing for 20 minutes. So the machine must just give you just that. But now the problem now it will come. Uh, will it check after 20 minutes if your clothes are clean? If it doesn't check, then that is an open loop. The output then is not taken back to the input to readjust. So if it's a closed loop machine, it's automated. After 10 minutes, 20 minutes, when it's finished uh, doing what it asks you to want to check if the doors are clean. If not, it will redo it again. Uh, we've got something joined, so that's where you compare the output and the input. This okay on a closed loop. 
Yes, this is a parameter which uh, emphasized the tool group, the error. And this is an advantage of closed loop is it's less sensitive to noise or disturbances as it realigns itself. All automatic control are closed loops. So that you need to bear in mind. Now, well, summarized for you, the input goes to the controller, disturbance, and then you sum with the information of the controller. Then there is a processing and the output, there is a disturbance, you get with the, the results, which doesn't go to the input. That's what the open loop is all about. But however, the closed loop here, with having those disturbances, then you have the output, which is sensed, taken to the input and compare with what the input sensor was anticipating, and then the adjustment is made accordingly. So those are the block diagrams uh, summarized for you. So this is a, a steam controller, which controls the speed of the steam locomotive. What you will expect there, if you had to set speed, the more the steam get in, then if it's like creating higher speed than wanted, then it will be given back to control the valve, which will uh, be shut down. So there is another one where it's used in a, in a linear car. You've got a direction which is desired and an actual direction. So the difference between the two is the error, which is used there by the driver, the driving mechanism to realign the speed. So here you've got a sort of manual uh, closed loop control system, where the guy looking at the tap, the level of the fluid, if his field is enough, and then he shut down the car. You must be able to sketch this in blocks as well. Okay, the examples goes on and 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 on. Now, this is a, a challenging uh, exercise for you, which you can go look at it. There is an answer right there. How will you represent this or you as a model? So, So this is a computer numerical control machine tool. It's as follows. Now you have to look at that. What is it that we have? And then it's described there. And you sketch uh, the output. Now, what is the transfer function? It's defined as the mathematical express ratio of the Laplace transform of the output to the Laplace transform of the output. So take the Laplace transport of the output to Laplace transport, uh, the transfer of the input, and then that will be giving you a transfer function. Okay. Right. So, that's, uh, that's it. So, well, just go through this note. Make sure you understand every part of it. When we meet on Friday, we'll look at the formulas and how we're going to summarize them. Good luck.